Am I the a-hole for ghosting my fiancé after she called the police on me and lied? I just need a place to vent about what happened recently and to seek advice on how to move forward. Me, 28 male, and my fiancé, 25 female, got engaged two weeks ago. We've been together for five years now. Three weeks ago, I came home from work exhausted. When I came home, I saw her and her friend Mike sitting at the dining table. I went over to my girlfriend, kissed her on the cheek, and tapped up Mike. I didn't really think too much about him being there since I know him really well and he's known my girlfriend since they were little kids. I just asked him if he wanted a beer or something, but he refused, stating that he was here to talk to me. I was confused at first, but when I looked at their serious expressions, I knew it was something serious. I grabbed a beer from the fridge and sat at the table as well. They started talking about how close me and Mike were getting over the last few years and stuff. I just sat there flabbergasted. I didn't understand what they were trying to get at. I think me and Mike were sort of social buddies. If we were both attending the same social gathering, of course I'd hang out with him. But I never really hung out with him alone or made separate plans with him. I just told them to stop rambling and to get to the point. I was exhausted and really didn't want to beat around the bush any longer. My girlfriend asked me if it was okay if Mike could stay over for a few weeks since he recently got fired and evicted from his place. I told them of course he could stay, as long as he didn't make a mess and contributed to the household like taking out the trash etc. He got up and gave me a tight hug and thanked me. Little did I know, this man was a filthy alcoholic. The first week things weren't that bad. He just kept to himself, did the chores I asked of him and it was fun having someone in the house to watch basketball with. After that first week, things took a massive turn. I started seeing empty beer cans everywhere, his dirty socks stuffed into our couch and stuff. I confronted him about it, but he just apologized and told me it won't happen again. I told my fiancé, but she told me to cut him some slack, since he was going through a tough time and he would get better. It only got worse. I started seeing dried up vomit in our toilet seat, and that's when I suspected he was an alcoholic. I started seeing empty bottles of rum, whiskey and vodka everywhere. I kept mentioning it to him, but he always gave the same response, as before. My fiancé couldn't care less either, and that ticked me off even more. Five days ago, I came home from work and my apartment reeked of alcohol. I just lost it. I stormed up to the guest room and found him drinking beer on the bed. I just went off on him. My girlfriend came over and tried to calm it down, but I didn't budge. I told him he has two days to clean my apartment and to get out. Otherwise, I was going to call the cops on him. I guess he didn't like what I said one bit. He just got off the bed and charged at me. All I remember is him ramming me into the wall behind me and me hitting my head against a sharp object. The next thing I know, I see an officer pointing a flashlight at my face. I ask him where Mike was and he told me he was in a safe place where I couldn't hurt him. He and another cop grabbed me off the floor and dragged me outside. I saw my girlfriend and Mike talking to a cop. At this point, I'm fading in and out of consciousness. When she looked at me being escorted down the stairs like some rag doll, I wanted to tell her something, but my head just hurt too bad to form any sentence. I got put in the cop car and was driven to the station and put in holding cell. I kept asking them why. All they responded with is the I have the right to remain silent BS. I remember just sitting in the jail cell with my head feeling like it was going to explode any second while trying to make sense of what just happened. I remember dozing off and at some point and being woken up by a cop. He told me I was lucky they didn't press charges on me and I was free to leave. My headache felt much better at this point, so I could actually form sentences. I asked him to explain to me what happened. They told me they received a phone call from my fiancé, claiming I was drinking again and got really violent. And her friend had just subdued me to stop me from hurting her. I was so confused. Like who was drinking and who got violent? He just told me the same story again. I was beyond mad at this point. As soon as I got my phone back, I texted my dad to come pick me up and to drive me to my apartment. He tried to pose questions as to why I spent the night in jail, and I just told him to drive me home. I'll explain later. Once there, I just stormed upstairs to see if my front door was unlocked. And to my surprise, it was. Mike and my now ex-fiancé was sitting on a couch. I could tell she had been crying since her mascara was running down her face. She jumped up and tried to hug me, but I just pushed her off me and told her to get the heck out of my apartment. She tried begging and pleading, 
but I told her to shut it and to pack few essentials and to get out. She left after begging a bit more. I immediately called off from work, claiming I had an injury and just got dispatched from the hospital. The whole day seemed like a fever dream to me. Nothing made sense. Why did my fiancé lie to the cops? That's all I thought about all day. She tried calling me a million times, but I kept trying to ignore it, until I just couldn't hold back anymore. I picked up and told her to explain everything and to not dare even think about lying to me. She ended up telling me that after Mike knocked me out, they both started to panic. She was scared of calling the cops on Mike since he was already on probation, and this would probably end up destroying his life. She told me in the heat of the moment, she made a stupid decision to claim that I tried to attack her and Mike protected her and accidentally knocked me out. Her reasoning is that I could afford it, since I didn't have a criminal record, and Mike did. I didn't want to hear any more and just hung up. She texted me all kinds of apologies and tried to call many more times, but I was done. After I started randomly throwing up, I went to the hospital the day after and found out I had a concussion and would be forced to stay home for the next month. I'm beyond hurt by this. Why would she choose her friend over me? Why did she try and ruin my life to try and save her friend? She tried coming over several times a day, but I never even dared to answer her. I've blocked her and everything. But today I got a text from her mom claiming she tried overdosing on painkillers yesterday and was in the hospital. All she wanted was to see me again. This has made me sort of regret ignoring her. I haven't responded to her mom or anyone for a fact. The only person besides those involved who knew are my dad and mom and my mom is taking care of me at the moment. I'm really conflicted. On the one hand, I feel like ending her for what she did. But on the other hand, I still love her and feel like she made a genuine mistake. I don't want to feel any more pain. My life is a freaking mess, and by erasing the last five years of it, probably would just make me end it all. I don't want to see the love of my life being buried over me ignoring her. I don't want to force my poor mother to be my free caretaker for a month. I feel like it's my fiancé's responsibility now. I'm so done with everything. I'm literally glued to bed all day, and my laptop and phone are the only things keeping me sane. I start randomly getting panic attacks and start shivering uncontrollably. Please, what should I do? Am I the a-hole for ignoring her and making her s idle? Should I allow her to come see me? Now for the top comments. Hands up who thinks she's banging Mike. She's definitely banging the heck out of Mikey. An unemployed, drunken, evicted mofo on probation. What a prize. Shaking my damn head. She definitely chose unwisely. Not the a-hole. Seen it a million times. These kinds of women crave validation and attention, and you can't possibly compete with someone who doesn't have to do literally anything all day. They can just sit there and give them attention and reaffirm all of the things they say, until boom, second boyfriend. When Mike injured your head, they should have called an ambulance. By delaying your medical care and then delaying it further by lying to the cops and sending you to jail, they could have ended your life. And your month-long bed rest could be a result of you not getting immediate medical care. Head injuries are no joke. I would be getting her to admit everything via text and then pressing charges. Also, if you were arrested, there's now an arrest record for you. Not the a-hole. She is messed in the head and also probably banging Mike. You got lucky and dodged a bullet. She picked Mike over you. If you believe that she is truly suicidal, then you should call the authorities to where she is. Be careful. You now have a paper trail that you beat her. So if you let her come over, she can play the same card and you will go to jail. Doubtful she's really subtle. Most likely she took some pills, but much less than a fatal dose in order to use her side to manipulate Opie. It's a cry for attention. If she tries to blackmail Opie with self-harm, he needs to call Adult Protective Services. Um, no. Opie can just continue with no contact and there will be no way to hear if she's thinking of suicide or not. Plus, block her family too. If she is living with them or in touch with them, they are the ones to call police for wellness check. If she is slash pretends to be suicidal, he should just stay away from her. Next story. Am I the a-hole for being happy I won't be a father? I, 24 male, casually dated a girl, 23 female, for like 5 months and even though she was on birth control, she ended up pregnant. Now, I have no desire to be a father, so I ask her to terminate the pregnancy. 
and told her if she did not, I would not be around during the pregnancy and would want to do a DNA test after the birth before I would contribute anything at all. Well, she decided to keep the baby for some reason, even though neither of us were in the financial position to take care of it anyway. I was very annoyed with this and broke off contact. At fourth month, she had a miscarriage. I was informed about it by her friend and was told she was heartbroken. Now, I have empathy for the physical pain she has to go through, but the result was very beneficial to me. And honestly, I was quite happy I no longer had to become a father. Me and my buddies went out drinking to celebrate, did some toast to the fact I would not have to be a father, and basically word got around that we had done that which eventually reached my ex and her friends. Now she and her friends have been harassing me and my friends for being happy about her miscarriage. However, as I see it, we did not specifically celebrate her miscarriage, but the fact that I was not gonna be forced to be a father. And I feel like it's something that has nothing to do with her really. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? You get two judgments from me. Not the a-hole for being happy about the fact that you're not going to be a father. You weren't ready for the responsibility, didn't want the responsibility, and weren't in a financial position to become a father. But you're the a-hole for how you went about showing that happiness. Now, if you were to have celebrated at home and took a shot with your friend here's to not being a dad, that would have been okay. But the fact is that you went out in public and toasted to the fact that this girl is dealing with a miscarriage. And that, my friend, is just in really poor taste. This is the fair assessment here. You're not the a-hole for being excited you aren't a father. You're the a-hole for celebrating how you did. Next time, don't celebrate the messed up thing that caused it to happen. Just celebrate that you aren't a father. Hopefully, there isn't a next time. And if you get somebody pregnant again, you'll be ready for it next time. Also, just for the record, there are a ton of contraceptives outside of birth control. It's not just on the woman to use contraceptives if you don't want kids, lol. You have to take an equal part in that. I always tell my brothers the same thing. They throw out the, but, but it doesn't feel the same if you use a rubber. But here's the thing, like I said, there are options for both women and men. And at the end of the day, do you want it to feel right and risk popping out a kid you aren't ready for? Or are you going to suck it up and further prevent a kid from coming into the world? Food for thought. Anyway, have a good day, OP. And please, if you get the chance to legitimately apologize, you should. If you don't want to be a father, then get a vasectomy or wear rubbers. You need to become responsible for your own birth control, sir. He is 100% responsible for where his seeds ends up. When he chooses the climax inside of a woman, he has chosen pregnancy. Even if she is on hormonal BC, has an IUD or anything else, he is choosing to risk pregnancy and deserves 100% of the consequences. If he does not want to risk pregnancy, he should get a vasectomy and or use rubbers. Yeah, it's completely irrelevant if their partner has an IUD or busy pills or whatever. If men don't want to risk pregnancy, they should always be wearing protection, 100% of the time. Last story. Am I the a-hole for using hall passes my wife gave me? Okay, I am in a tough situation right now. My wife had a six months affair in the seventh year of our marriage and got caught. It was a shocking and devastating thing, obviously. She offered me one hall pass for each month of her affair. It took years of marriage counseling to get back where we were previously. I used the hall passes my wife gave me at the beginning of the reconciliation. I slept three times each with two different women without my wife knowing. When she gave me the passes, she put several rules. 1. She should not know the use of hall pass unless she asks. 2. I should answer her questions honestly and in detail if she asks. 3. Protection is a must. 4. No emotional connection. I obeyed all these rules, and I am going to be very honest here. It helped me subside the resentment I had towards her. That is just how getting even feels, I guess. Not that it's a great thing, but it's a fact. It has been five years since everything, and we were doing great. Last week, she decided to ask me about the whole passes out of nowhere. I was honest with her as she asked. I answered every question she asked. Maybe I shouldn't have been honest thinking now. She does not even look me in the eyes now and in a depressive state. I know this calls for another marriage counseling for us and maybe individual counseling too. I did not even remember the whole passes and women before she asked, but I feel like crap now. Was I the a-hole? 
Now for the comments. She cheated, so you felt like crap. She felt crap and said something that would resolve her guilt and would make you feel like you got one back on her. You have gone and had a good bang, and she now feels horrible, like how you felt. So two people feel crap now. Surprise, surprise. Why am I laughing? She got what she gave you. I mean, she didn't even. He slept with two people with her permission and all within the rules she set out. She cheated on him for six entire months. Yeah, I was going to say, she cheated fully, emotionally and physically and much more than six times. Letting him sleep with different people six times isn't even close to getting even. If he wanted that, he should have had a full-blown six-month affair. What would that have even accomplished? If he wanted to get even, he should have divorced her. Marriage isn't something you keep score in for the behavior. Not the a-hole. This is why you don't ask questions you don't want answers to. Up until now, the whole passes were hypothetical. If things improved to the point of being great between the two of you, she might have had hoped that you never used them. But she asked, and you were honest. She can no longer pretend you haven't been with someone else. These are the consequences of her actions. She needs to come to terms with the fact that she started this. She cheated. She offered you whole passes. She could have walked away years ago after cheating. She chose to stay. I guarantee you, she wasn't thinking it would hurt this much when she made the offer. She was probably desperate and willing to do anything to get you to stay. I know you were not asking for advice, but I highly suggest you book the couple's therapy ASAP. This isn't a typical case of cheating. You are both adults that came to an agreement. How you navigate your relationship going forward is up to the both of you. She didn't think he would use them. They were the empty words of a cheater. Yep, manipulative cheater doing what they do best, then getting upset over it. He still has no idea how much he cheated. Catching your partner once doesn't mean they cheated once. Doesn't mean they stopped cheating either. I love the no emotional connection rule when she had a seven-month affair. She's just an all-around terrible person. Yep, you can't have an actual relationship that would be unfair to me. Your totally faithful wife who would never do that. Honestly, I'd actually be angry as hell at her reaction. Why are you upset? Did you give me these whole passes believing I'd never use them? Were they a tactic to manipulate me back into this marriage? Did you never care for my feelings or the damage you did? And this was just another lie you made to get what you wanted.